Salutations, respected viewers. I'm George from Ireland. Here I am in Edinburgh, and uh, far behind me you can see a bit of Arthur's Seat, that uh, dormant volcano. Um, I'm in the meadows of Edinburgh, and you can see this um, stone monument behind me, which um, commemorates the International Exhibition, which was held here at, at Edinburgh on the meadows from May 1886 to the 30th of October that year. And it was opened by uh, Prince Albert Victor, that's to say Queen Victoria's eldest um, grandson. So Queen Victoria's um, eldest son, he was Edward VII, wasn't Edward VII at the time, but later became Edward VII, and Edward VII's oldest son was Prince Albert Victor. Now, he's called Prince Albert Victor to avoid confusion with his grandfather, Prince Albert. Though, confusingly, Prince uh, Albert Victor was commonly called Prince Eddie. Maybe I'll just call it, stick with Prince Albert Victor. So, um, he was a fairly popular figure, but he died of pneumonia around about the age of 27. There were all sort of bogus rumours that it was Jack the Ripper and nonsense like that. So, um, he had going to be he had been going to marry um uh, uh alexandra of denmark but um he uh, didn't in the end uh, sorry he had been his, uh, that was his mother alexandra of denmark Ooh. he had been going to marry a may of tech um the um daughter of a german grand duke uh, but instead his his brother george v married that same um may of tech mary was really her name queen mary she's known as in queen mary that university in london queen mary the renowned ship so isn't it, would, that, would that seem a bit odd to you? Um, your, uh, your, your brother's girlfriend, your brother dies, then you marry her. But hey, um, that, that, that's what royal families are like. It wasn't really a love match. You didn't have very much choice in the matter. Got to marry a suitable person. Has to be uh, um, ideally a princess from a Protestant friendly family. And um, <clears throat> there weren't many uh, possible candidates around. Anyway, so not too much about um, Prince Eddie who died not very long after this, 1886. Um, had been tutored by um, J.K. Stephen, um, Jem Stephen, J.K. Stephen, and some people all suspected him of being Jack the Ripper. But again, that's pretty improbable. There were about a hundred suspects. So back to the exhibition here. So um, many different countries were uh, here to to show what they could do in terms of industry and science. It's about technology, really. And so a, a huge exhibition hall was built here. You may have heard of the, the Great Exhibition in London, 1850 to 51. And it was the same idea and there's a world expo every two years moving to a different city it goes on to this day it was in abu dhabi not so many years ago it was in astana kazakhstan not so many years ago milan seville held it in the 90s and so forth paris held it um and st louis held it a long time ago so uh it was all along here and there was talk of making it permanent this great exhibition hall but an act of parliament said no it must be dismantled and returned to be um to be uh and just a place of a recreation and leisure but no organized sports tend not to be ball games here um anyway uh so then it's got the names of various scots quarries around here i don't think they all donated stone for this memorial here as in cocklaw red hall crag and i'm wondering as they're on this face of this um, octagon are they in that direction or not um and it's got this very victorian um inscription uh which uh is sort of a memento mori underscoring the the brevity and the transience of this life how we should think of things of the spirit and look to the afterlife and make sure you you, you keep your soul in good repair and uh, don't uh, succumb to temptation do anything iniquitous with incubus or secubus or whoever man's days are a shadow that passeth away time as he passes us as a dove's wing unsoiled and sweet and uh, is a silken sound it is a servant as a servant earnestly passeth um uh, des sorry desireth the shadow time is the chrysalis of eternity light is the shadow of god and time and tide waiteth for no man uh, i mark the hours of sunshine well arranged time is the surest sign of a well arranged mind so there we are time is short i remember seeing that on a martyrs memorial church where the reverend ian paisley was the incumbent um, so up high it's got uh, various coats of arms like the lion rampart of scotland the this red stone is rather weathered so it's somewhat uh, worn away, the abrasions of goodness knows what, wind and rain, possibly pollution, 
recalling Thomas Clark was Lord Provost of the city in Scotland and only in Scotland a Provost is a Mayor but in major cities Edinburgh and Glasgow is Lord Provost Lord Mayor we'd say in Ireland okay yeah commemoration of the international exhibition blah 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 okay so various coats of arms and the crown so that's that not a lot of people know that and how the Marquis of Lothian, one of the most notable aristocrats um, in North Britain, he was president of this committee to organise this international exhibition. So come here to the lungs of the city. It's not a huge city. In, um, it's an exceptionally pleasing and historic city. Um, very handsome. Trouble is almost unremittingly grey in terms of its um, uh, stonework. All right, so that's enough from Edinburgh and the Meadows, which is hard by the main university area, the former Royal Infirmary now turned into um, expensive flats. So thank you. Please subscribe. It's absolutely essential you subscribe. And thank you so much for your most uh, generous donations on PayPal and Patreon. Keep, keep them coming. Keeps the wolf from the door, I can tell you. So book lessons with me in English literature, English as a foreign language, history, geography, religious studies, politics, French, law, and hire me as your tour guide in London. Right, toodaloo.